to it. I want to get to the technicals in just a minute. Before we do, though, Julia, uh, more broadly, your thoughts on the performance of the market. Look, up about eight tenths of a percent. Look pretty good. It was a good day for the Australian share market. In fact, we hit the highest level that was seen for the Aussie market since July 2010. So a fresh 16-month high. And the good news is that we did see a bit of the volumes coming back. It was the best trading day of the week so far. It was very much a risk-on session, and that was helped along by the overseas lead, where we saw a very good US and European session overnight. Some stronger-than-expected economic data coming out from both regions. And so on the Aussie share market, it was really those defensives underperforming areas like the consumer staple sector finished in the red as did the utilities and the property space the property space of course in the spotlight with Stockland uh, issuing a profit warning so that stock down heavily and dragging down other uh, property stocks with uh, with exposure to that retail space but altogether it's good to see the trading volumes coming back on the market today we're expecting it to get busier tomorrow especially at 1 p.m. when we see a raft of China numbers dropping on our market we'll see the Chinese GDP numbers in industrial production, retail sales, fixed asset investment. So no doubt that's going to have a big bearing on our currency, which has been doing well, as well as the minus. See uh, a bit of momentum, if you like, for the bulls. And, and if so, on what basis? Absolutely. We've seen positive momentum and I guess up till now really what's been driving the Australian market and propelling it forward have been those defensive areas. We've seen the banking sector performing extremely well over the last year and areas like the healthcare space, the telecom space, the utility space. These are all sectors which have gained more than 20 percent and in the case of telecom more closer to 30 percent over the last 52 weeks. It's an amazing performance for an area of the market which usually doesn't see such strong gains. So there have been strong gains gains in the market. It's just been coming from a very different area of the market where we're not used to seeing very strong growth because these areas of the market, they don't tend to see very strong levels of growth within their business. So we have seen the the telecoms, the utilities, the banks, the property sectors really propelling our market forward. And one of the reasons for that is the low uh, and the falling interest rates that we've seen since around about November, December last year. And that's really been propelling a lot of investors into some of these defensive high yielding areas. At some point during that uh, falling interest rate cycle, you do start to see investors shift to more growth type of investments. And that's because falling interest rates also make it cheaper for companies to grow. And at some point, I guess there's a flow on effect for the economies as well as a, a better environment for companies' profitability and it is cheaper to grow. We haven't really seen that uh, shift to uh, the growth emphasis as yet, but we have seen iron ore prices stabilizing, perhaps the mining space looking a little bit more attractive. So we'll be watching to see whether that shift occurs because that's the next important uh, step in terms of strategies and how to manage strategy uh, during the stock market and the earnings cycle. At the moment, we're still seeing very much a defensive stance. Um, but but we're waiting to see uh, that, that shift into some of the uh, more growth, growth at reasonable price type strategies which work well at the next part of the earnings cycle. Julia, big day, big, I suppose, a few weeks, if you like, for, for the media space. A couple today very much in the spotlight, 10 and 9. Would you get your thoughts firstly on 9 and this deal that, well, you know, the market very much been hanging on. Look, the media does like to talk about the media, so we do tend to focus on it a fair degree. But um, 9 Entertainment CEO David Gingell coming out and say, listen, they have an inc incredibly strong balance sheet now. They've been able to do a deal. What did you make of the deal? So I guess what we've seen is all the debt being swapped over for equity, which means there's no debt left in the business. But I guess for the uh, the lenders of the business, they've been turned into equity holders. So we have seen a deal being done, and that means uh, Nine will not be facing bankruptcy. There was $3.2 billion worth of debt. The majority of that was owned by hedge funds, so $2.3 billion of that was uh, owned by uh, Oak Tree as well as Apollo. They'll now own 90, uh, well, the hedge funds will own about 95.5% of the company. The the other four and a half percent will go to the mezzanine lenders, which were really led by Goldman Sachs, which owned about one billion dollars worth of the debt. So it does look like a restructure in terms of the balance sheet. And I guess now it's time to focus in on the underlying business. And if we have a look at that media space, we did get the SMI September ad uh, spend numbers. And the good news is that we saw an increase of six percent in September compared to August. And really leading the charge there was TV ad spend, which was up nine percent month on month. We have a a look at the uh, individual channels though, have a look at 10 versus 7 versus 9, a very different picture. In fact, 10 not looking too good at all. We did see um, 
Ad spend there down by 26.1% in the month of September. And that's after August's huge drop of 42%. So 10 really struggling on the advertising revenue front. Seven, on the other hand, actually saw a lift of 12.9% in September, taking its market share to 44%. So it's a clear leader in this area. And nine as well, uh, it saw revenue uh, ad spend up by 6.1%. And that takes its market share to around about 35%. So very different picture in terms of the different channels. Tens obviously the one that's lagging the most and in the most amount of trouble in terms of its underlying business. But nine and seven really jumping back in the month of September. Yeah, I want to get to ten in just a minute in particular.